Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Properties and Structures of Matter. This is video number 29 on Metallic Networks. Metallic Networks is really the last of the network groups or solids that we need to look at in terms of their structure and also their properties. We've looked at the ionic solids and the fact that they are a network of ionically bonded cations and anions of uh, covalent networks which are just a series of covalently bonded atoms and covalent molecular which are discrete molecules that are then held together by intermolecular forces. In our last look at solids we look at metallic networks. Metallic networks are similar in the sense to ionics except that all of the atoms or ions are positive they're all cations and this is because metals have a small number of electrons in their valence shell and when all of these atoms are close together they uh, the electrons in these outer shells will actually migrate um, from one atom to the next we have a kind of uh, mental model that we use to describe this, uh, referring, to at, uh, referring to it as islands of positively charged metal ions or cations in a sea of electrons. So the electrons are just moving everywhere all around these little ions uh, of positive charge. Now, of course, one of the important things about metals is they're very, very good conductors of both electricity and heat. And the fact that there are mobile electrons means that if we were to put, for example, a potential difference across this particular metal, we would find all of the electrons migrating towards the positive end. And this means that we can actually get a current to flow through this particular uh, substance. The loose connection or the loose force of attraction between the individual nuclei of all of the atoms and the valence shell electron or electrons is so weak that the electrons do tend to drift around and they move from one of these islands or cations to the next. Now if there's no uh, electric field set up then this is a random movement. There's no um, uh, there's no current that's been set up. It's only when we set up a potential difference between the ends of a piece of metal that we find the electrons will all flow in the same direction. What happens as a result of this is we've got the third type of chemical bond. So if we think about our chemical bonds and our chemical bonds are very strong bonds and that includes ionic bonds and covalent bonds and now our third type, our metallic bonds. Metallic bonds are again in the network structure are continuous. All of these cations with the electrons moving freely around uh, creates obviously very strong bonds between each of these. The electrons are kind of holding all of these positive ions in place and that means that most metals have a very high melting point. While many of the metals are hard, some of them are soft, something like lead is very soft, and some of them actually melt at quite low temperatures. Um, lead is one of those, and of course, so is mercury. One thing about the metallic bond, unlike the um, ionic bond, so compared with the ionic bond is a good way to think about this next point, is the sea of electrons will shift. The metallic bonds are not rigid. So you may remember in a previous video, I talked about the fact that if we had a series of um, cations and anions next to one another and we shunted one down by hitting it with a hammer, then we would put uh, positives and positives together and negatives and negatives. And this would cause the material to become brittle and to snap. That doesn't happen with metals because the electrons basically just redistribute if you uh, to sort of hit this with a hammer or push it down or draw it into a wire. Metals are very malleable. They can be shaped and ductile. They can be drawn out into a wire. And it's because they don't have the rigidity that the ionic substances do. They're very free flowing. The sea of electrons enables them to change their shape without becoming brittle or snapping. 
So malleability and ductility are two very important qualities. So is good conductivity. And most metals too have a very shiny, lustrous nature. Probably important at this stage for you to get a table together for all of the four different types of solids that we've looked at and compare their structure and bonding against their properties. Thanks for watching.